So we're going to try and transfer the information from inside the box here into this rectangle here, this box. So you have to ask yourself, how far do you have to go from one side of the box to the other before you come across certain features? So the red bottle meets the yellow bottle roughly here, which is about halfway, which means halfway from here to here, roughly here, that's where the shoulder, if you like, of one bottle, the yellow bottle, is going to come to, like this, and then where the shoulder of the other one comes. And if you look carefully, the red one underlaps the yellow one. So it goes something like this. But as I'm drawing this, I'm also asking myself, how far up the page am I having to go? Because I don't want to bring this part all the way up here. I need it to be roughly down here. And this is where you just have to train your eye. You know, you can try and measure it if you want to and ask yourself, how far is it from here to here? And then how many of these spaces can we fit up here and then work it out? But that's it's quite time consuming to do that with absolutely every little feature. So you're just going to have to train your eye, flick your eyes quickly between what you're copying and what you're drawing to try to get it roughly right. So now I've got to get the width of the, the red neck here, which I'm going to estimate is roughly about here. And it doesn't go straight up, it goes up and then slightly out. And then how far is it to this bit? Here to here, here to here. It's not quite halfway. I would say that's about halfway. So this is just under halfway. I would say maybe to about there. And then across. So using these little skills, trying to get your angles right, your relationships between the features right, you should be able to enlarge up what you see. And so much of this is just through eye, okay? And you have to also um, trust yourself and not spend, you know, 20 minutes on one line. Just go with your gut, flick your eyes quickly between the two. The yellow bottle is slightly taller here than the red bottle. So it's gonna come up higher and it goes off the page. And then we have a gap before this uh, stopper and this bottle comes in. So we need a gap, then here's the stopper and it goes up and around and then it goes off the page at the top. Look how it goes off the page here or off the box here at the top. Okay, so we're gonna go roughly like this here and across and off. We can always adjust things if we decide they're a little bit wrong. Again, watch how I'm holding my pencil nice and light, halfway up. We're not pressing like this. We're pressing lightly like this and allowing movement of the wrist to cut these shapes. So there we go. There's the stopper, there's the neck. Although I'm thinking my stopper might be, it's roughly the same width or it sticks into the box the same as the yellow neck. So I've made that a little bit too far over. I think it needs to be more like that. Okay, so what I'm gonna try and do now is very quickly plot in the rest of this. Okay, so now I've got the main objects just sketched in, the composition for everything. I'm having a bit of trouble getting this exactly centred, but it's the best I can do right now. What we're going to talk about now is tonal mapping. And what that means is, if you look closely at this photograph, you can see that there's an outline for each of the objects. But then within, you've got all these amazing little shapes that delineate where we've got pure white, grey and black and any shades in between. And then obviously with the red, you've got very dark red, pinky red, medium red, bright, bright blue, light blue, very dark blue, white. You know, so this is what gives the thing the real quality of the glass, the reflections, all the little shadows and so on. And the fact that you can see through one bottle to another one. So here the yellow is so dark, it looks almost blacky brown because the blue behind it is creating that real depth of tone and colour. So what we're going to do now, once you've got the basic lines, is do a tonal map. And that means outlining 
some of these little shapes to help you so that when it comes to putting the colour in, you've got a little bit of a map to follow. A bit like paint by numbers, okay? But we're not going to outline absolutely every single little change in tone um, because there's, you know, there's an awful lot of it. It's up to you to decide how much you want to put in, okay? Um, mm, to a certain extent. What I'm concerned about there is that some of you may say, well, I don't need any. You do need some. You need to be able to guide your colour, okay? So I'm going to do some of that for you now and then maybe time lapse a bit of it too. Um, to start off with, how about we look at this bit here? Black or a very dark wedge at the top. A sort of strange squarey shape here, a skinny white bit, and then this sort of round bit here. Now, please notice how fast I'm going and how I'm not agonising over it. If it's slightly wrong or it's slightly like that shape, that bit there is probably a bit too wide. That there could be a bit more elliptical. But don't worry too much. You could spend forever. OK, you're just wanting to give a rough idea. So the red bit, the top part of the red is, is darker. This is all down to how much you notice. Hopefully you can see that part of the bottle is very dark red. This is more pinky. So here's the dark red band here. There's another bit here, like a sort of skinny stripe. And then within this main body of the, the pink bottle, you could add this kind of a thing. And hopefully, as I'm putting all these lines in, you can see what I am drawing and how it matches up to what we can see here. The blue bottle has a very dark, skinny bit down the side here, then a light bit, a light stripe. And then it has a dark stripe, which is slightly bulbous at the top, and then goes thinner as it goes down. Okay. And you would be tonally mapping the actual bottles, but also the background. You know, look at this creamy coloured background. There's a little line we can put here to show this dark bit just there behind the bowl. Right. So that's me finished all my composition which is the outline of all the different objects and putting them in the right place to begin with and making sure they're the right size. And now I've finished all my tonal mapping. So I've got everything I think I need in there in order to start putting all the colour in. But that's going to be a separate video because I'm going to need a good few hours to work into this drawing to show you how it can develop up and how we can mix the colours. So we'll do that next time. So. For today, I just want you to get to this point. Bear in mind the things I've told you. Very sharp pencil, hold it very, very lightly and move it nice and fast. Nice loose motion with your hand, okay? You're tickling the surface of the page. So rather than doing this, you're doing this and then you can manoeuvre it and it's, it's just so much easier to get the kind of accuracy that we're looking for with this. The other really important thing about going lightly is you're going to be putting colour pencil into this and the last thing you want are loads of horrible big black lines coming up through the drawing. You want these pale uh, pencil lines to disappear by the time we've put all our coloured pencil in. Okay, and they will do if they're light enough. Great, okay, let's have a go.